break the unbreakable. God, we believe. Hey, God, we believe for him from the impossible. Let's see a miracle. God, we believe. Yes, we believe.
This looks a lot like my garage. <laughs> Supplies in case. I always want to be prepared. Part of the, the beauty of the Loyalist is we tend to guard the truth. Unhealthy though, we're very fearful. That's the struggle. For me during this series, what I'm wanting is to remember everything that can go right. I naturally am going to think of everything that can go wrong. And in that, I miss out on relationships. I miss out on opportunity. I miss out on growth. What if God does incredible things because I stepped out in faith instead of retracted in fear? Hey everybody, welcome to Sandals Church Online. Hey, my name is Morgan. At that video you just saw was highlighting Tammy Brown, who is a core style six, which is also known as a loyalist on the Enneagram. Hey, we're all here getting ready to listen and hear more about the loyalist from our lead pastor, Matt Brown, as he is continuing in our series, a series called You. And this is where we're taking a look at the Enneagram with a grace-filled and biblical perspective. If you are new to Sandals Church Online, we're so glad that you found us, however that may be. We would love for you to get connected and stay connected with us by downloading the Sandals Church app. You can do that by going to sandalschurch.com slash app. Our vision here is to be real with ourselves, God, and others. And this vision has impacted so many people in the last 24 years. And one key area of impact has been for married couples. Take a look at this online marriage event coming up next week. Hey, what's going on everybody? Jeff Y and my wife, Nikki Y Hello. here. Hey, if you are a married couple, we have something for you. A lot of times when it comes to marriage, like, oh, what is the church doing for married couples? We have a marriage conference, which are great, but we ain't got no marriage conference. We have a marriage game show yes, for you do. guys. And tell them what's gonna be on that marriage game show. What are we gonna be doing? We're just gonna be laughing, we're yep. gonna be learning, and That's we're gonna right. be hearing some honest stories about marriage from real. people who are willing to be real That's about right. what marriage really That's looks right. like. But awesome. you should join us, cause right. it's gonna be pretty epic. It's gonna be awesome if you have other married couple friends, you guys can get together, or this could be like a date night for you. Uh, all the information is going to be at sandalschurch.com slash just fight fair. That's what's going to be. We hey. hope to see you there. Hey, this is going to be so fun. If you are married or engaged, plan a date night at home with your spouse, fiance, or even other married couples and enjoy this game show, Just Fight Fair. Go to sandalschurch.com slash fight fair for more information. I actually want to take a second and introduce you to a specific couple named Paul and Miriam Michaels. They're a part of our online campus and they have been deeply impacted by the marriage ministry of Sandals Church. They've been blessed by the community and the vision of being real all the way out in Illinois. They actually shared with us recently that even through COVID, their marriage is thriving and they attribute that to being a part of Sandals Church. It's an honor to walk alongside people like this, and it's really such an encouragement to us. If you give to Sandals Church, I want you to know that their marriage, as well as so many others, has been impacted by your giving. And if you've never given to Sandals Church, then would you consider joining us as we continue to help strengthen marriages in our communities? You can give right now by going to give.sc, or you can give on the Sandals Church app. Okay, it's about time to go in and hear from our lead pastor, Pastor Matt. Come join us as we continue on in a series called You. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us at Sandals Church. Apparently last week when I preached, I, I picked up a Southern accent. So I heard, this from, I heard this from everybody. I didn't mean to sound like I was from the South, uh, but I'm a three in the Enneagram and we're adaptive. And so apparently I just went Southern. So maybe next week I'll preach in a cowboy hat. That probably won't happen, but... But I apologize, I did not realize I was doing that. But everybody's like, you sounded like you were from the South. And so uh, I'm not from the South, I'm from California, I promise you, my whole life. And, uh, uh, but I'm back today, I'm gonna try to not sound like I'm from the South. But last week I landed in Dallas, Texas to be on this TV show and I was picked up by this brave woman named Sharon. 
And Sharon picked me up and she said, you know, she was wearing this big Escalade. She said, you can sit in the back or you can sit up front. And I was like, I don't want you to be my chauffeur, Sharon. So I'll sit in the front. And as we're getting off the freeway, I kid you not, I was in Texas for minutes and there was a road rage incident right in front of us. And as we were getting off the off ramp, these two Texans, don't mess with Texas, slammed on their brakes, stopped traffic. Sharon almost rear-ended this dude in a Lexus, and we were in an Escalade, which we would have won. But, you know, that doesn't matter. I'm a three, but I wanted you to know we would have won. <laughs> but these dudes get out of the car and are screaming at each other. And Sharon says, I hope they don't start shooting. <laughs> Sharon! You know, apparently she's a six. She goes, that's what they do on the news in Texas. Everybody's got a gun. I'm like, Lord, please, please don't let this be a sermon illustration. But thank God these two psychotic men got back in their cars and drove away. And Sharon looks at me and she says, I live my whole life here. I've never seen anything like that. I've been in Texas 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So just know I'm not moving to Texas. I feel much safer in California. Unless you're watching from Texas, God bless you. Feel free to tithe. You should. All right. So we're in a series called You. And, and today, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Christians struggle with this. Well, why don't you just talk about God? Well, I'm going to talk a lot about God today. And I'm going to talk about how you view God. Listen to me. I love you wrongly. That's the problem. The problem is never God. The problem is how we see God. The problem is how we share God. The problem is how we view God. And so today we're going to look at probably one of my favorite characters in the Bible. His name is Peter, the Apostle Peter. And if you're a six and you're frightened, I know you are, it's okay. God loves you. And when God decided to pick a captain to build his church, listen to me, sixes, he picked you. He picked a six. He told Peter, your name is Peter, and upon you, Peter, I will build my church. Let me tell you something, sixes. You have no idea what God wants to do in and through you if you stop listening to fear and you start listening to Jesus today. So we're in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 23. Uh, and if you're confused and you're tuning in, this isn't my book, this is in the Bible, the book of Matthew. But here's what it says. It says immediately after this, Jesus is always moving, right? Immediately after this, he got his disciples to get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. Now, if you come with me to Israel, and I hope you do one day, one of the things you're going to be the most disappointed in is the Sea of Galilee. Not because it's not beautiful, but because it's small. It's a very, very small lake, but it's also a very shallow lake. And we'll talk about why that's important in just a minute. And then he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up in the hills to pray. Amen, introverts, because that's what you got to do after you spend time with people. I got to pray, Lord. These, these people are all going to hell. I need you. So he goes up to pray. He sends the disciples across the lake. The night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, we got the disciples. They're in trouble, amen, that's us. They were in trouble and they were far away from land for a strong wind had arisen. And they were fighting heavy waves. Let me just tell you this. I don't care if you're a six or not. We have been fighting heavy waves for 18 months. One wave after another wave after another wave. Man, I went and spoke to a group of pastors this week and I made the mistake of reading why they came to the conference. I want to give up. I want to give in. I've never felt this, this desperate in my life. Look, this is Pastor Appreciation Month. Would you just pray for your pastor? I mean, I was depressed. It wasn't even my story. After I was reading why they came to the conference, I was like, oh, good God. Listen to me. It's been wave after wave. Economic wave, right? The pandemic all of the racial issues that are resurfacing surfacing in our country, the difference between left and right, cancel culture, it's all happening. And it's wave after wave, and some of us are just afraid. You know, we have neighbors that haven't spoken to each other in months because of their differences. They've been lifelong friends, family members that have separated because fear has gotten the best of us. And that's what happens when you struggle. Like the first wave, you believe in Jesus. The third wave, you're like, I don't even know if there is a God. <laughs> and that's what happened. So listen to this. These are, these are sailors. These are fishermen. This is the life they live. But they were afraid. This was a, a unique storm. And let me just say this to everybody who's listening. The last 18 months is a unique storm. A unique storm. And we've never gone through this before. Everybody who has in the 1920s during the Spanish flu, they're all dead. And I wish they would have left better notes, amen? <laughs> 
but we're going through this and we're wrestling with this. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them and he's walking on the water because he's God. Okay, so I'm like, well, I don't feel like that's physically impossible. I don't think that those rules apply to God. <laughs> okay, he made the waters, he can walk on water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified, terrified. This is Jesus, he called them, they know them. They're freaking out, listen to this, in their fear, and that's where some of you are today. You are not in faith, you are in your fear. And they cried out, it's a ghost. Listen to me, friends, that's what some of us do. When we are driven by fear, sometimes the very thing Jesus is trying to get us to see is the very thing we run from. I have seen Christians lose their minds. They're afraid of everything, instantaneously. I say one word wrong, oh, Pastor Matt's gone liberal. <laughs> or I stuttered. Could be, you know, one or the other. But people are constantly operating by what they're afraid of. Look, you may not identify as six, but during the pandemic, we've all been a six at one time or another. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. In our fear, we can mislabel the presence of Jesus. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, he said. Listen to this, my friends. Take courage. Courage is not something that just happens. It's something that you take. It's something that you grab on. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. Why? I'm here. I know the storm is, is scary. He's not minimizing the size of the waves. Right? That's what we do when somebody else shares their fear. Oh, well, the waves aren't that big. Notice that's not what Jesus says. He doesn't minimize the size of the waves. He doesn't make fun of their fear. Listen to me, parents. Don't put your kids down because they're afraid of the dark. I always think maybe they see something we're missing, amen? <laughs> and everybody's like, okay, you just scared me, pastor. You just scared me. <laughs> don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. Why? Listen to me, parents. Why don't your children have to be afraid? Because mom and dad are here. I'm not saying the storm's not scary. I'm not saying the darkness isn't scary. I'm saying you don't have to be afraid because I'm here. Listen to me, friends. If you're battling cancer, Jesus is saying, I'm here. I'm right here. If you're sitting at home battling COVID, Jesus is here. On my worst nights with COVID, my worst nights were my most powerful nights with Jesus. And I wanted it to go away, the shaking, the fevers. But it didn't go away, but Jesus didn't go away either. He was right there. Listen to this, and then Peter called to him. What would happen in your life instead of looking at fear, you just called to Jesus? Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Listen to these words, yes, Jesus said, come. And so Peter, our six, went over the side of the boat. He forgot he was afraid because he found his faith. And he walked on water toward Jesus. What are you heading towards today? If it's not Jesus, you're gonna be overwhelmed with fear. So he's got his eyes on Jesus, right? Like you, like me, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. What was that? <laughs> That's how all of us are. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified, listen to this, oh, and this is all of us, and he began to sink. I mean, that's where some of you are today. You have wandered from your faith and you have become overwhelmed with fear. And Jesus, Peter says to Jesus, save me, Lord, he shouted, save me! And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Isn't that nice to know that that wasn't the time for the lecture? <laughs> you know, you really should believe Peter's like, I don't. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what we do as Christians, right? <laughs> oh, you have little faith. <clears throat> Jesus immediately grabs his arm. He says, why did you doubt me? After he pulls him out. And then they climb back into the boat and the wind stopped. The wind stopped, and then the disciples, right? That's me. After the miracle, I'm like, oh yeah, I always believed. 
Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God. They exclaimed. I want to talk to you today about the loyal person. The loyal person. This is Peter. Peter reflects God's faithfulness. Look, we can all criticize Peter all we want. People love to poke fun at Peter, but he's always there, isn't he? When everyone else is gone, when everyone else runs away, Peter's there. And these are the people in your life. They're terrified of you, but they're right next to you. <laughs> and we need to thank God for them. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, this is how God defines himself. If you're a six, listen to me. This is how you reflect the glory of God. Understand, therefore, Deuteronomy 7, 9, that the Lord your God is indeed God and he is faithful. Man, aren't you glad God isn't like us? Man, human beings, boy, we, we struggle, don't we, with being faithful. Some of you have changed churches seven times during COVID. <laughs> and some of you are like, well, I'm praying about changing again. <laughs> isn't it nice to know that God isn't that way with us? He is faithful even when we are faithless. Do you know what the Bible says? Because he cannot deny who he is. He's faithful. That's who the sixes are in your life. And here's what I want to challenge you to do. Would you just thank them for being there for you? As my wife and I get older, we're just so thankful for the friends who've stayed, for the people who've been with us. So the good times and the bad. These are the people in your life that are like God. God isn't just with you when times are good. God is even more with you when times are bad. And that's how the loyalist is. And so here's their motivation. Here's what drives them to be safe and to avoid risk. But listen to me, sixes, your core sin, the struggle of your existence is fear. And a lot of people say, well, I don't think fear is a sin. Well, I don't think you understand fear. Fear caused Peter to deny Jesus. A girl asked him, in a culture where women were not even allowed to publicly speak to, to men, a woman asked him, aren't you a follower of Jesus? She could pick up on his twang. You know, I was, I was with, in Texas for a, a couple days. Peter had been with Jesus, and he had a twang. And she said, you sound like Jesus. And he said, I don't even know the guy. Why? He was afraid. In Galatians 2.12, the apostle Paul has to rebuke Peter. Do you know why? because he refused to stand with the Gentiles who had converted to Christianity. And Paul confronts him. And, and the reason Peter refused to stand with him is because he was afraid. Just like some of you guys, you're more worried about pleasing your Christian friends than you are the Christ you're called to serve. That's what happened to Peter. And some of you still aren't convinced. That's okay, I got more scripture. <laughs> I just don't think fear is a sin, pastor. There's that southern accent again. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Matthew 16, 22 through 23. I want you to listen very, very carefully to what I'm saying. And Peter took him aside. Guess who him is? It's Jesus. The day you have to take Jesus aside and counsel him is the day you're in trouble. <laughs> Jesus, come here. Let's talk. And Peter took him aside, listen to this, and Je excuse me, Peter rebuked Jesus. You know why? Listen to me, sixes, loyalists. Because Jesus shared with his disciples that he must suffer and he will go to Jerusalem and he will be killed. And Peter thinks he's doing the right thing by keeping Jesus safe. And so he rebuked Jesus we will never let you die, Jesus. Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen. Peter, in his fear, stands against everything that God has been moving towards since the beginning of time. And that's what fear can do if you're not careful. And then Jesus turned to Peter. Listen to me, Sixes. I love you. God loves you. This is the only time Jesus ever says these words. Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Fear will never put you, put your mind where it needs to be with God. And let me just say this to all of our parents. We got so many parents that are just trying to protect their kids. Listen to me. 
The fear of something bad happening in your life may very well keep God out of bringing something good in your life. And some of you parents, you're trying to keep your kids from ever experiencing something bad and that may keep them from ever experiencing God. Are you a better parent than God is? God lets us hurt. God lets us do bad things. God lets us experience consequences. And some of you parents are blocking and tackling and you're keeping the Holy Spirit away from your child because you won't let them suffer for their choice. Don't, in the name of keeping bad away, keep God away. Peter thought he was doing something right. Surely nothing good can come out of the cross, amen? Peter wanted to save Jesus, but Jesus wanted to save you and me. And the only way to do that was to go through something really, really bad. So if you're a loyalist when you're healthy, man, you are a beautiful, wonderful, amazing person. My wife is a six. She's a loyalist and praise God. Praise God. Because all I care about is winning. She constantly is worried about, you know, okay, is this going to, is our whole family going to die? Someone needs to think about that. <laughs> Loyalists, when healthy, when healthy, are able to determine the character of the people they encounter. I just want people. My wife's like, I think that's a bad one. I can't tell you how many times, man, early in our life, I didn't listen to my wife's wisdom when she said, watch out for him, watch out for her. He gives me the creeps. I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she proved to be right. Man, I've hired people on staff at this church that my wife said, I got a bad feeling about that person. And I was like, well, I have this seminary degree and I'm the pastor. <laughs> and so I'm gonna make this bad choice in spite of your wisdom. Listen to this, loyalists are reliable. They're reliable. They're loyal. Get, get a six for a friend. Just this week at church, just, are you a six? Are you, are you, are you? Just have a sign, we're looking for some sixes in our small group. And you know why you want that? Because they're afraid not to come. They'll show up. Loyalists are reliable. Listen to me, they're trustworthy. One of the things that six fear the most is lying. They're compassionate and they're good planners. Man, no, no, matter, no matter where we go, my wife has snacks. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna eat well. Man, if it was just up to me, my kids would starve in an hour. It's true, man, she's always ready for what could go wrong. And we go on a road trip, I'm like, I'm hungry. She's like, well, I have you know, Whole Foods Market right here. It's amazing. And sometimes I just like come up with ideas and it's in the box. I'm like, wow, how did you know that? She's like, I've been married to you. I know what you like. <laughs> but they're reliable, loyal, compassionate. They're good planners. Here's why loyalists are so important. They desire to see the world as a safer place. And let me just say this. Loyalists bring a much needed voice of caution. And if you're a three, you need a voice of caution. One of the stupid things I've ever done in my adult life was we used to go to this, this campground in Big Sur and we would jump off this bridge. And because I'm a three, it's always gotta be bigger, it's always gotta be better, it's gotta be more dangerous to be more fun. And I decided in my brain that I was gonna jump off at night. Yeah, totally stupid. <laughs> my wife said, this is a bad idea. She said, I'm gonna be so angry with you if you die. Do not do this. She wouldn't even come to watch me do it. And I had it all figured out. I marked on the bridge exactly. I literally, right where I knew to jump. And I just knew that it was a great decision until my feet left the bridge. And it was pitch black. And I was like, should have listened to Tammy. <laughs> now, fortunately for me, I survived. And I went back and told her. I said, that was, that was probably the dumbest thing I've done. And she said, I know, but I just need some space from you because I kind of wish you were dead right now. Uh, <laughs> But we need, to, we need to learn to listen to those people that say, hey, what if something doesn't go exactly the way you think it's gonna go? Because I'm a three, I always think it's gonna go great. What could go wrong? My wife's well, where are we, you know? <laughs> okay, six is I love you, but when you're unhealthy, like when you're healthy, you're the rock upon which Christ is gonna build his church. 
But when you're unhealthy, loyalists focus on potential risks and danger. That's all they see. They can't see the potential for success. All they see is risk and danger. And so listen to me, especially if you're a single mom and you're high on the six and you're raising a boy. Man, he's going to take risks. And one of the things that we're not doing very well as a society is raising boys. And if we don't raise boys, they don't become men. And they're, they're, we're just a little whacked out more than you. And we need, you know, to be a little risky. So you got to manage that. It's okay if he skateboards and breaks his arm. He might learn something. But he's not going to learn something if you constantly prevent him from hurting himself. So you got to be, especially if you're a single mom, you, you've got to make sure. Or if you're a dad and you're six and your kid is walking around like the marshmallow man or the Michelin tire man, you know. <laughs> you've got to make sure that you, you understand that, listen to me, life is risky. You know what people say to me now when I say goodbye? They don't say God bless you anymore. They say stay safe. That's the new God of this age. Nothing is safe. Things are safer and less safe, but you're not safe. The world is dangerous, but God is good. Six is, I just freaked him out. They're like, oh, God, I go. <laughs> All right, you guys listen slow. Let's go a little faster. Here we go. Loyalists will allow fear and anxiety to dictate their life. You know what that means? God is not in control. Your anxiety and fear is in control. You will never follow God when you're following and giving in to your anxiety and fear. It will never happen. That's why 99% of Christians never share their faith. It's not because they don't know they're supposed to, it's because they're afraid. And so they don't do it. And everybody that's listening, one of the things Jesus is gonna ask you about on Judgment Day is who did you tell about me? And I was afraid isn't gonna cut it. And here's the thing, loyalists, if you're not careful, you won't trust anyone. Everyone will become unsafe. Everyone will become a potential threat. And especially if you're a loyalist, a six, and you've been abused, you've gone through some trauma, you've been betrayed, something terrible has happened to you, right? Now we add that on top of your natural struggle, it can become overwhelming. And this will cause you to avoid new experiences and, and listen, and to sabotage relationships. Because you're afraid of losing a friend, you'll kill the friendship before they get to. And then guess what happens? You miss out on life. You miss out on life. I mean, we all have to be honest. We've missed out on some life the last 18 months, haven't we? I mean, I think the thing that was most discouraging was, you know, we tried to stay safe and I got it anyways. Do you know how defeating that is to spend 11 months avoiding something you get? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you know some of you are like, well, it's not even real. It's real. I had it. And you're like, I'm going to another church. See, told you. <laughs> Here's what we need to do is we need to understand that, that fear is good if it leads to caution. It's bad and sinful if it leads to anxiety and an overwhelming sense of chaos and instability. So how can the loyalists be real with themselves? First Chronicles 28, 20 says this, be strong and courageous. You have to make a decision. Some you say, well, God didn't make me strong. Look, you can become strong. You can become strong. Be strong and courageous. Listen to me and do the work. Do the work. Okay, courage takes work. It takes work. I know some of you find this hard to believe, but I used to be terrified of public speaking. My first speech ever was a two minute speech in junior college and all I had to do was share my name. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Junior college is a terrifying place. And I didn't see it coming. My name's Brown. I'm gonna be one of the top two. <laughs> don't be afraid or discouraged. Listen to me, for the Lord my God is with you and he will not fail you or what? Forsake you. And isn't that incredible? So if you're six right now and your score is super unhealthy, 
Let me ask you this question. What could go right? What could go right? I always crack up when I see unhealthy sixes going to the grocery store. They're all, <gasps> like you're going to hold your breath the whole time you're shopping. <laughs> you, you, you know the sixes in the grocery store when somebody's hacking. And by the way, that's over. You can't hack in public places anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to tell my parents this. You know, if they're over 75, they don't, they don't know this yet. You just, yeah, <laughs> that's done. <laughs> it's done. But you can always tell a six because somebody hacks and it's like, it's like a bomb went off. <laughs> somebody shooting? No, they're coughing. <laughs> Let me ask you, what, what could go right? And then next, how about this one? Is this, is this a realistic fear? Like I love sending like scary videos uh, to my wife on Instagram because I'm a loving, compassionate husband. <laughs> And so she beat me to it this week. She, so my wife doesn't surf, doesn't want to go in the ocean. She sent me this video of these surfers right here in Southern California surfing in a drone. Did you see this? Is watching all of these great white sharks swim right underneath them. One guy's not even on a surfboard. He's like an idiot who's like body surfing. <laughs> and you see him duck under the wave and he pops up and he never sees the great white shark literally right beneath his feet. And some of you, that made you afraid. You've never been in the ocean in your life. <laughs> One of the greatest Saturday Night Live sketches of all time is Land Shark. Land Shark. <laughs> They're not walking, knocking on your door. Who is it, Land Shark? No, it's not happening. <laughs> all the young people Google that. It's not happening. Some of you, you couldn't sleep last night. You had to put your foot on the floor because there are sharks in the ocean. Yeah, but you're on the ground. But you choose to be afraid of everything, and that's not healthy. Next, and especially if you're my wife, listen to this point. Feel free to, <laughs> feel free to underline this, pray about it. Let's just all take a moment. For the love of Jesus and all that is holy, self-monitor negative or scary information. If you're a six, why do you watch murder investigation shows? <laughs> Why? Why? I come at home, my wife's in bed, she's got, she's like, he did it, he did it. Why are you watching that? Somebody help me. All right. A healthy loyalist is always in pursuit of courage and trusting God. Listen to me and themselves. I mean, I love you guys. I don't really care what you think. I'm a three. I know I'm right. <laughs> sixes, listen to me sixes, they have a hard time finding their own voice. You have to learn to trust the God-given instincts when they're healthy that he's given you. Remember, he chose Peter for a reason. Jesus isn't a fool. He knows. Why would he pick a loyalist to lead the 12? Because they needed somebody to be loyal to those knuckleheads. Listen, you gotta learn to trust yourselves and, and wait for, this is scary, and eventually others. So how can the loyalist be real with God? I know what you're thinking. Well, if fear's a sin, why on earth would the Bible say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? I knew you were gonna ask that, so we're gonna talk about it. Proverbs 9, the entire chapter is about wisdom and what wisdom does. And then in verses 10 through 12, listen to these words. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Stop, sixes, I lost you. Next verse, for by me, says God, your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life if you are wise. If you are wise for yourself. What on earth does fearing the Lord mean? The fear of the Lord is not going to cause anxiety and more fear. That's going to take away days of your life. That's going to take away years from your life. So what on earth is God saying? Well, here's the problem. Whenever we translate an ancient language into a modern language, there's not always an exact word from one language to the other. So we do the best we can. 
And so fear is a really, really bad word, but it's the best word we have in English to describe the Hebrew word yirah. Yirah can mean many, many things. Let me give you some other words. Respect, reverence. We don't know what that is. They used to call us reverence. Now they just call us knuckleheads if they call us at all, right? <laughs> reverence. It can also be used for a word worship. But the closest word we have from Yara in English is awe, A-W-E. But the problem is in English, we created a word called awesome. And now you're a skateboarder. Awesome, dude. <laughs> See, it doesn't work. Here's what Yara means. It's not fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom. It means to rightly understand yourself in light of God. That's what Yara means. And, and let me just say this. Some very well-meaning pastors and Christians say this. I'm nothing compared to God. Show me in the word of God where it says you're nothing. You're not nothing. Matter of fact, a couple weeks ago, we found out that the word of God actually says that you were created just a little lower than God. You're not a nothing. You're something. You see, because we don't understand how magnificent God is in order to, to compare ourselves to him, we have to make ourselves zero. And the reason we make ourselves zero is we don't understand he's numberless. He's eternal. You're not nothing. A healthy six runs to God. An unhealthy six runs from God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Rightly understanding yourself in light of who he is is the beginning of wisdom. And listen to me, sixes, this will make your days longer. And this is what's wrong with our world. This is why our world is spinning out of control because we no longer understand ourselves in light of him. And this is a whole nother conversation, but why is identity so huge? Because human beings were never designed to define who we are in comparison to ourselves. We were made to understand ourselves in comparison to God. And so when we take God out of the picture, I have to compare myself to something else because there is no such thing as self-identity. We identify ourselves based upon something else. Psalms 91.2. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. He is my place of safety. He is my God. Listen to me, sixes, and I will trust in him. What's the opposite of fear? It's trust. I'm gonna trust you. It doesn't mean the fear goes away. It means I take the courageous step of trusting God for who he says he is. So how can a loyalist be real with others? I want you to listen to me very carefully. You've got to work to find trustworthy people. I wish everyone was trustworthy. They're not. And some of you have been burned by one person, so you trust no one. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy. This is towards the end of his life. The apostle Paul is nearing his death. He's discipling the young man that will take over the leadership of the church this is what he says. Now teach these truths to other, listen to it, trustworthy people. You see, you can waste your teaching, your time, your love on someone who's not trustworthy. And some of you ladies, you say it all the time. I've given up on men, really all four billion of us. <laughs> all four billion. Because you ran into one bad one, two, three, four. There's billions of us. Find somebody who's trustworthy who will be able to pass it on to others. Listen to me, sixes. Find somebody you can trust. Find somebody. Proverbs 3, 3 through 4. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. I don't care what the world does. The God hasn't called you to be them. He's called you to be you. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Can I just say, sixes, there would be no church without you. 
you've clung, you've hung in there, you've been faithful, you've been loyal. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was doing the book tour here at Sandals and I met a wife whose husband's left the church and she was at the book tour and I said, why didn't you leave? And she said, I can't leave my spiritual family. She's a six. And we prayed for her husband right there because God loves him too. But she stayed, she's a loyalist. He says, tie them around your neck as a reminder, write them deep within your heart. Never ever let loyalty and kindness leave you. Wear it as jewelry. Then you will find favor with what? Both God and people, amen? And you'll earn a good reputation. So how on earth do you love a loyalist? I have a lot to say on this. <laughs> and let me just say this. If you're a six and you're married to someone like me, I, I didn't used to be this. I've had to learn through mistakes, through brokenness, and thousands of dollars in counseling. So <laughs> learn, learn this for free. If you, if you are raising a six, if you are married to a six, if your best friend is a six, if someone in your community group is a six, here's what you have to be for them. You have to be secure, consistent, and always tell the truth no matter how hard it is. And I've had to learn that. Because what I've learned is my wife would rather deal with the reality of the truth than be afraid about my lie. And in my heart, it wasn't that I was trying to lie to her. Listen to me, guys. I was trying to spare her, but I wasn't sparing her. I actually was torturing her. You see, thousands of dollars for free. Feel free to <laughs> write a big check today. Love you. Next, thank them for their loyalty to you. Tammy and I, we celebrated 25 years of marriage, okay? And I wanted to make a big deal of it and celebrate her because she loved me when I was nothing and had nothing. When I met her parents, they were like, Tammy, we, uh, I don't know, I don't know. But she saw something in me I couldn't see in myself yet. And she loved me and supported me. And for those of you who are thinking about giving up on your marriage, man, the beauty of lasting is you get to experience that. If you check out too soon, you miss it, you miss it. I don't just love the good times with her. I love that we survived the bad times. I love it. Next, encourage them to be courageous. Encourage them. Now, she's never going to be me, you know? She's never going to jump off a bridge, but she could jump into a pool, <laughs> you know? And don't do what I used to do by helping them. Don't throw them in. That doesn't, that doesn't help. Next, listen to me, fiercely support them when they're right. Fiercely support them. You know, the apostle Peter was the only one who accurately described who Jesus was. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not given this to you, but it's come from heaven. Jesus supported Peter when he got the right answer and no one else had it. Next, lovingly correct them when they're paranoid. <laughs> it happens. You know, my wife, she, like, she's always afraid, you know, someone's gonna get in the house. And I just tell her there's nothing scarier in this house than me. <laughs> but she's sick, so I lock all the doors and I just remind her I'm right here. And you guys, we have a 160 pound dog that we should have named Satan. I mean, she's, <laughs> I mean, we, we love her, but she might be the devil, I'm just saying. Um, and, and anyone that comes in her house meets her. So but I just have to remind her, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I'm not going anywhere. God's not going anywhere. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Let me just pray for you right now as we close. Would you all bow your heads and close your eyes? And every single one of us over the last 18 months, we've had an hour, we've had a moment, we've had a day. Some of you have had 18 straight months of fear and anxiety. Let's invite God into that. Let's not invite the fear of the Lord. Let's invite Yerah a right understanding of who God is in light of our situation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, give us your raw. Help us to rightly understand who we are in light of who you are. 
God, help us to trust in you. Help us to keep our eyes on you because when we do, we can walk on the water in the midst of the wind and the waves. And when we take our eyes off you, we can sink just like Peter. Help us, Father, to keep our eyes on you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In this life, it is absolutely vital for us to have courage. The thing is, even if your core style isn't the loyalist, fear is universal. We all have things in this life that trigger fear within us. But what Pastor Matt reminded us of is the truth that Jesus is here. He is present with us in fear just like he was with Peter. What if you didn't give your focus to fear in the season of life that you're in, but you rather turned it to Jesus? One of the ways we gain courage and we grow in a healthier perspective of our own fear is by being in community. If you're not local to one of our campuses, we would love for you to start an online community group or a Sandals Church anywhere. Go to sandalschurch.com groups to find out more about those. And for those of you that are local to one of our California campuses and you haven't yet come back to your local campus, I want to encourage you to join us in person again. We can't do life alone and that is just the truth. Whether you've been watching online out of habit or fear has been holding you back, maybe this week it's time for you to step out and come together with others again at your local campus. Go to sandalschurch.com locations to find the nearest campus and service times in your area. I'm so glad that you guys joined us in service today and we're a part of our Sandals Church online family. Come back next week for service right here at the same time. We'll see you soon.